Yo, I've been coding for close to eight years now, and over the last month, I've been building my first startup alone. I'm already learning a ton about building more efficiently, so if you're currently thinking about building an app or already have one, I hope this video will be super valuable. This video is sponsored by Lovable, but before even talking about working together, this is a tool I've used myself and really enjoyed. Now, what I want to focus on today is UX and UI design in apps. This is partly because I love design and deeply care about it, but also I know it's something a lot of solo founders struggle with. In my opinion, having a good design in your product is a moat and can immediately convey trust to your potential customers. From the beginning of building my startup creator Kiwi, I've taken the time to think about how I want my design system to feel. I think a very important piece to understand is that your design style says a lot about your brand, so you should be careful about the decisions you make. For example, if you have a UI with no border radius and a sharp font, you're going to come off as more professional, whereas if you have very rounded corners, bright colors, and sans serif typography, you'll come off as more playful. Whichever route you go, just make sure you stay consistent with the colors, fonts, and styling you use. I use Tailwind CSS to code all of my styles, and with it, you can define color variables that automatically let you use classes for background colors, border colors, and more. Having these colors defined and a system to use them has been a cheat code for me to design a lot faster. I have defined colors for typography, borders, backgrounds, hover and active states, and things like success, error, and warning states. It will take a bit of time to define all of these, but once you have them, you can very easily add a new element to your UI, and you don't have to think about what color the border needs to be or how to style the hover effect. For things like text, I like to have a strong color, a weak color, and a muted color. There's no science to how I pick these, it's really just what I think looks good, and all that really matters is that you have enough contrast where everything in your interface is readable. Now, Lovable is an AI tool that lets you go from idea to a functional app in just a few minutes. I used it for the first time a few months ago to quickly test out various UI ideas I had, and it's become a frequent part of my design workflow. There's two ways I like to use it, the first being I describe an interaction I'm trying to build and see what Lovable comes up with. The second is I provide specific inspiration screenshots for UIs that I really like and want to create something similar. The first case is useful when I have no idea how I want a UI to look and finding inspiration is a little tricky because the interface pattern isn't as common. My workflow for this is simply to describe the general idea of how a user would interact with the feature in terms of what buttons they press and what things need to appear because of that. Then Lovable can create a working UI that I can click around in and get a feel of how that would fit into my existing application. So I had the idea for a new feature in Creator Kiwi the other day, and I thought this would be the perfect demo for Lovable because this is the exact process I would have went through. So Creator Kiwi helps creators better understand and monetize their YouTube audience. And a great way to do that is building an email list. So I wanna show creators what content drives the most email signups. And probably the simplest way to do that is give them a super easy way to create one-off landing pages for each video in just a minute or two. I don't know for sure if I want to include this, but Lovable lets me build the concept super fast and start playing around with it to figure out what things I didn't think of or help me make it nicer to use. So I've pre written a prompt here. Let me just grab it from my document. It's a pretty long one, but I, I found that the more descriptive you are in this very first prompt, the better results that you get. So first line is just a landing page builder built for simplicity and conversions. You could leave it here and Lovable still create something interesting for you, but I wanted to go on and really describe the reasoning behind this app as well as styling decisions. So I go, it's highly customizable and designed to allow creators to effortlessly collect emails on a beautiful landing page. Next, I say use a sleek off-white background and I give the actual hex code that I use in Creator Kiwi with Kiwi Green, again, the hex code that I use in my own branding for the interface itself, and then white background, black text, and buttons as the default landing page styling. Um, so I say I use enter for the headings, keep a clean and modern design, 
Again, the tool's meant to help creators monetize their audience just so that Lovable can get an idea of like, why does this app exist? There should be two pages, an editor and the landing page itself, details in a sidebar, what should actually be in that sidebar, some information about what you can edit, like the hero heading, the subheading, the button text, all that sort of stuff. Then I get into describing an appearance tab with all the different customization options, tell it that it can use Google fonts to change the fonts, how to go about changing colors with a color picker. And there's a lot of extra stuff that I added just for better context to get the best result that I can. Now with all of that written, I'm gonna hit send and see what Lovable comes up with. This is something I didn't actually think of, like to have like a, a fake Mac OS browser window. That's really cool. Now we have this sidebar. Oh, see it, it followed what I said. It has the sidebar with icons. So we can add the content, take that, heading, And then we'll go put that back. Now in the form settings, email field label. So I wanna see what I did here. So I said, I don't actually don't have a label, but I'll say, you know, your email, and then we'll go peter.parker at gmail.com. Button text, um, join, join for free. Additional field, oh yeah, this is actually something I saw in another design that I told it to build. So we can say, you know, I want, to collect your name or I want to collect your phone number. Another prompt we could say is like allow both name and, and phone number, but that's not important right now. Here image, this is very cool. So what I'm actually gonna do is take a quick picture. Look at this beautiful, beautiful hero image I've got here. Another prompt I'll add is to allow resizing and I don't like that you can drag it on this image, but that's okay. Oh no. Oh, I thought I just refreshed the page on accident. So let me just select the image. I'll just say, Come on, come on, sick. All right, so image layout, left of text, <laughs> right of text, below text, that's funny. In the settings, we can go, all right, you know what? That's kind of scaring me, I'm, I'm turning that off. So in the settings, we can change the font. So it actually does work, that's awesome. Pop-ins, Playfair, it's very cool. I keep with enter. So you can change the text color, you can change the background color as well. So let me do this, go back to my site. Very nice. So we can also customize the border radius. So make it not rounded at all, very rounded. I'm gonna go like eight pixels. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, this is very cool. So you can pick a pre-built theme, minimal, ocean, kiwi. I like that. Lavender, oh, that's nice but I wanna go back to what I was using in the analytics page. This is very cool. Okay, so you can see the total page views, signups, conversion rate, that's a crazy conversion rate. How many signups I got per day, and then YouTube video sources. Like this is super cool. If I actually had this, I think that would be sick because it would help me to make better decisions about what videos I should be making. So that's awesome. We can say, okay, I wanna use, you know, convert kit. That's good. Obviously it's not gonna use the real logo, but this is, kind of exactly what I was thinking. So connect to ConvertKit, Creator Kiwi wants to connect with your account. It'll be able to add new subscribers, track conversions, create custom tags. We can authorize it. Oh wow, look at that. Pretty decent app. I think I like just clicking around with it. It makes sense. Of course, there's some decisions I would make if I was completely building this from scratch, but this is a great starting point just to see what does this feel like to click around in. Now I wanna show you how I go about talking with Lovable after that initial prompt to fix things or add new functionality. So one of the first things I saw was that this hero image, when I select it, right, like it's a little hard to move around the box. And then once I actually apply that and I put it, for example, to the right of the text, the email form doesn't stay in line with that. So I wanna say, when you crop an image, uh, make sure that you can't select the source image behind. When you insert a hero image, make sure that the email form you know, stays with the hero text. I'm just remembering as I'm doing this, there's now a chat option. So if you just like wanna ask Lovable about why did it make a certain decision? Or maybe how would you go about implementing something yourself? You can go in this chat mode and ask it something. So after a little bit of back and forth with Lovable, just fixing some small bugs or adding functionality, I now have some improvements. So I can align the text left, just like my actual newsletter. 
then when I upload a hero image, we have a much nicer way to, um, how do I resize it? I know I did it. There we go. We have a much nicer way to resize it as well as move it around. So do that. I'm going to put it to the right. Sweet. I forgot I can close this up. And then now the success redirect URL should be working. It's going to go to my site and then the thank you page, which should be set up. And I think that is everything. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in an email. Join for free. And we're here. We are on the actual thank you page. So that is really cool. And just goes to show you what is possible with something like Lovable. I now have honestly a site that I'm really happy with that when I go to implement this in Creator Kiwi, I have a great starting point and a lot of inspiration for how this thing can look and work. Now, like I said, the second use case is taking inspiration directly from other interfaces and then providing that to Lovable to get a more refined design that I can play around with. Finding inspiration can be difficult, but there's two sites I've used that have been really good. These are Mobbin and Nicely Done, which both are libraries of UI design inspiration that collect screenshots from tons of different apps, organize flows like signing up or upgrading your account, and each have pretty robust search functionality so that you can look for individual components like buttons and modals to find inspiration for your app. They're both paid tools, but the quality of the curation and the amount of time that they both save me make it more than worth it. If you're only looking at something like Dribble, it can work, but a library like Mobbin collects UIs from real apps so you can see proven UX patterns and how real users interact with them. So I wanted to give you guys a quick demo of both Mobbin and Nicely Done so you could see how you can more quickly get UI inspiration. So what I'm trying to do is build an integrations page. So I'm just gonna start looking at some existing pages. These ones are mostly for marketing sites, but they could still be helpful. So, you know, this one has a bunch of little boxes. Okay, this is a specific integrations page. So documentation and overview of it, the website, the category. Okay, you know, this is giving me some good ideas. I actually like this one. So it shows a box for each one with the thing on the side. Ooh, this is really good. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna use this one as the main inspiration. So let me open up a new lovable project and just paste that in. Go back and then maybe just find one more. Okay, I like this one. So where you see the logo, the name, the website, just click about and the category. Copy that, go back to lovable. Then I wanna show you nicely done. So it's pretty much the same thing where if I go in and search integrations page, the only difference here is that they just added this like AI search, which makes it a little easier to find what I'm looking for. So as you can see, very similar screenshots, a lot of the same overlap in apps, but there are some that don't exist in one, but are in the other. So, ooh, I really like this one. So this is in hash node. Yeah, I really like this one. So let me copy that image, give that to Lovable. Another thing you can do in both of these tools is go through user flows. So I wanna see if I can actually find like an integration. There we go, okay, managing integration. So you can go through, see what that looks like. This app might be a little less relevant. This is probably a good one though. So you're on an integrations page. Oh, got it, so you can go in there. You can actually really like this. So you can delete the integration, deactivate it, have like a quick description of it. Okay, turn it off. Yep, you can delete it, the confirmation modal. So I actually quite like this. Let me just copy this image. And what's useful for flows is if you're using something like Lovable or you're just building it yourself and you wanna know how it should work, you can look at the flows to get inspiration to see like, okay, I come to this page, I press this button, I get this modal to confirm, and it just helps you to get inspired in terms of how to make your interfaces usable. So with all of that, I'm just gonna describe Lovable, what I want this integrations page to look like, and we'll see how it does. Okay, so I just made a quick prompt to saying that we're building an integrations page and to use these attached screenshots as reference and added a little bit of extra information about how I want this whole thing to work. So if we hit send, we'll see how Lovable does. All right, so it's all done. We're gonna see how it's working. So if we go to settings, oh, that's actually pretty cool. I didn't think it would make this. So this is really nice. It made a, some breadcrumbs. Yes, it's really nice. So if I go to the integrations page, wow. Okay, this is a lot better than I thought it would be. 
This is great. So can I search? So I like go GitHub. Wow, that's really nice. Honestly, didn't expect it to, to be this good. So if we look at intercom, oh, wow. I didn't think it would, oh, I hope it's not just hard-coded intercom, that'd be funny. Okay, so you can enable and disable it, about, use cases, the categories, you can remove it. Wow, that's, oh, wow. So I can enable it, go back. This is really good. I honestly didn't expect it to, to look like this. So yeah, I think that just goes to show you that something like Lovable is really powerful because this is a page I'm currently working on in Creator Kiwi. This is what it looks like now. This is very rough, but I just wanted to get it on a page. But now with this as inspiration, I can very easily kind of take this design of the card, which I already have one pretty similar, but then for the actual view pages, I could be like, okay, well, I want a main section on the left that describes the integration. And then on the right, I can have information about the category, who made it, the email, all that sort of stuff. So this is really useful. The way I like to look at Lovable and any AI tool is that it's something to save a lot of time ideating and testing out new ideas and quickly figure out whether something is worth working on. If you're a beginner who's been wanting to code or build apps for years, there's really never been a better time to learn. The thing you want to remember, especially if you're just starting out, is that these are tools meant to help you, not replace you as an engineer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found some value from it. If you want more content like this, I have a weekly newsletter where I talk about things I'm learning building my first startup, so if that sounds up your alley, there'll be a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next where I talk about how you can start building cool shit. Thanks for watching and take care.